thank you so you see i've got my silverware you know i figure we're going to be making so much energy i'll make some silverware art while we're talking <laughs> let's see if i can bend my pen <laughs> why not oh no i'm telling you one time when i had teenagers i was teaching an all-day spoon bending class with teenagers once they realized it didn't matter what the object was, all that mattered was your intention and connection and flow. They were bending everything, everything. Like they were grabbing rebar, construction worksite rebar and tying it into pretzels. Wow. And so I told that story and then, um, one of my adult students, the last time I taught a spoon bending class, went and bought a thing of rebar. He's like, well, if the kids can do it, maybe I can. And he did. He like totally moved into a, like into a, I think, I don't remember if it was a U shape or if it crossed, if he crossed the ends into a loop. So. Man. I want to do it so people at work will stop stealing my pen and say, that's my pen. How can you tell it's in a U or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think, um, you know, spoon bending, it's it just like time bending, it's just a different object. And we are here today to talk about time bending, one of my favorite things, thanks to my friend Kim. So, yes, yeah, so hi everyone, I am Bonita, I'm here with my friend Kim, who, um, Kim is not a professional teacher, but we are very good friends and occasionally she lets me talk her into sharing the skill she has that is amazing. And I gotta tell you, um, how many years ago was it when you taught time bending at my wellness center? Like four or five years ago, I Some, think. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so Kim, knows how to make time do all kinds of things. Very cool. And like five years ago, I talked her into teaching a time bending class at my wellness center and that we were packed. Yeah. We, it was very well attended. And not only that, but everyone who took the class requested many times for you to teach it again, as well as like people who like missed the class and were so upset wanted to take it. Kim's time bending class was without question the most requested class I ever hosted at my wellness center. Unfortunately, or for, you know, fortunately for Kim, she got a great opportunity, moved way around the other side of the world, totally different time zone, and was not able to teach. And then, you know, I closed my wellness center to travel the world for a few years. So now we're finally, finally, time has brought us back together yes. <laughs> and um next month february kim will teach a time bending class through my online wellness center my online school bonitawoods.org um but we have a few fun live streams with kim between now and then um today we're talking about manifestation and then the first sunday of every month i special enlightened people chat with the Akashic librarians here on Facebook. So uh, this Sunday, Kim and Dahlia of Crystal Cognizance will chat with the librarians about time. Excellent. That will be got so questions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then you'll also teach your class next month. Yep. Which will be very cool. We already have a lot of tickets sold. So if you guys are interested, sign up that thing is selling like hotcakes um so time bending like i thought today we could talk share some of the anecdotes because to just talk about lengthening time or whatever the different things without the anecdotes it's a little um intimidating uh I remember the first time I heard the term time bending and I'm like, well, what are we doing to the clock? You know, it just didn't quite, you know, sit well. It was just like, I don't get this. And then it was, um, it's just a, um, a phrase. Um, pe people call it a lot of different things. Um, but for me, time bending is either I can make it 
slow down to make the day longer or make it go faster. It's kind of a weird, but, but they are incorporated with each other. Mm -hmm. So like if you're running late to an appointment, you want, you want a slow time back down so you make it, but you also need to slide through time quickly. So it's kind of, you're, you're bending time in different factions to get where you need to go. Okay, Tim, tell one of my favorite stories about you, that time you were on the airplane. <laughs> I think you were in Chicago or someplace. Yeah, so um, I was coming home. Uh, I was, at the time I was sta uh, stationed in Baghdad. And when, when you traveled, it was like 24 hours by the time, because I lived in California at the time before I got home. So I had a layover in Chicago. And I, at this point, I'd already been like, I don't know, 18, 19 hours traveling, um, coffee, I'm living on it, you know, just I want to get home, I want to get to the bed, and take a nice long nap. And we got on the plane and I went through the, the series, at least for me for bending time to, to make it go quickly so we can get there fast. Um, we took off normal weather, nothing really stood out. We ended up landing 90 minutes ahead of schedule in LAX and the tower was like, you guys have to wait, we don't have a gate for you. <laughs> so even though I got there early, I did tell the universe we need a gate. So, you know, but I still got there early and it was just like, somehow we caught a massive tailwind going east to west, which doesn't happen that often. <laughs> so it was just, it, I loved it. So ever since then I started, um, spending time to, you know, I need to make it slow down because I have all these things to do and only two hours to do them. Or I want to get through the day quickly because I have something I want to do that night. Um, yeah, it just, it works well when it works. <laughs> and, you know, I tried that technique um, a couple of times. I teamed it with some other techniques I learned. So uh, a friend of mine who's an amazing angelic healer, and she like connects with angels like big time. So she makes sure that like whenever she gets on an airplane, she brings in her angel friends to surround the airplane and um, not only give protection, but help guide the airplane better. And then I worked with uh, Garrett Duncan, who is an amazing featherweight shaman. And when I studied with him, he shared with us a technique where you take a feather and you invite it to put its energetic feather filling the airplane so that it is guiding the airplane swiftly and quickly. So um, I did that. And of course, the angels and feathers are very connected. And then I got, once I had that in place, I did the, your time time shortening, time quickening technique. And I infused the feather and the angels with it. And it worked, it worked. We, I arrived like from Colorado to DC, we arrived an hour and a half early. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So like the pilot was on <laughs> there going, and don't ask me how or why folks, because we were supposed to be flying against the wind the whole way, but we got here early. So uh, as soon as we we're allowed to get on our phones again, he's like, call your loved ones, tell them you're here early. <laughs> yeah, the only thing I have uh, I would change doing that now when I do fly again is have the universe have a gate ready when I land there. <laughs> so that way yeah. you don't spend 20 minutes in the thing sitting on the tarmac going, where's my gate? <laughs> yeah. So one of my favorite anecdotes with you on time bending was that time. And since we don't have anyone's permission to share names, I will uh, hold back. Hold on, let me just make sure our uh, audience. Yeah, we are back on public when Facebook had put me to private again. <laughs> so, oh, so anyone who's watching, feel welcome. If you have questions to type them in. So there was that time we were sitting with that weekly group that we met with. And um, no, the monthly group when I had gone to. Yeah. Yeah. Monthly, the monthly Monday. And yep, I remember. Um, 
we were sitting there having such a wonderful meditative experience that night. And then our leader invited us to share. And there was like 10 minutes on the clock and there was what, 20 of us there or 16 of us. There was no way there was gonna be enough time for us each to share. And then, so we're going through the room and everyone's sharing and everyone, like everyone got to share and everyone had enough time to share from the heart. It was so beautiful. Yeah. And then like, and it was like we were in a little magical cave, like we were in a genie's bottle or something. There was like a coziness and a warmth and like um, almost like a sense of glitter surrounding us. Like, like we were in a beautiful, I would like snow globe only it was so warm and cozy and lovely and like candle lit. And then we got to the very end. You were the last one. Yeah. You finished your share. It was like, we all snapped out of a semi-hypnotic state. We're all blinking our eyes, looking around going, wait, what just happened? And it was exactly like what? One within the minute, within a few seconds of the end of our time. Yeah. <laughs> and then we all looked at you and we're like, you. <laughs> It worked. <laughs> it did. It did. But um, one thing we have to remind people on the flip side of um, time is the rebound. That if you stretch time too much on the flip side, it comes back little... <laughs> quickly. All of a sudden, you're like, where'd the day go? And it's just nothing got done. Um, also, if you don't, reset it you can get stuck in elongated period of fast movement or slow so, yeah i did that once three days i forgot to reset after because I, I slowed it down and i totally forgot to reset it and i was like oh my god these days are just dragging what is going on it just you know i mean i was sleeping by my clock six hours and i was waking up completely rested you know <laughs> And I'm normally an eight hour person, right? And yeah. it's just like, what's going on? And then I was like, I forgot to reset. Oh, and let me tell you, the next two weeks, I batted nine, it was gone. I mean, it was just, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> once you find the balance of it, it works well. That is so funny. I mean, I boring for you for three days, <laughs> but it's so funny. <laughs> And that's, that's the other thing too, is, you know, if you listen to other people and they're saying, it just seems like days are just dragging and you're like, oh, I played with time a couple of days ago. I probably should do reset or something. So um, yeah, it happens. We forget. <laughs> yeah. I had, um, did you ever find any work around with that? Because every time mm. I stretch time, I know that on the other side, it's going to snap back like an elastic band. I think it depends um, if you use it for the intended time. Okay, I, again, I haven't figured this piece out because I keep forgetting to reset. <laughs> but I'm thinking right. it's like once you use it for your intended time and you reset, I think it'll move on and as normal. It won't, you won't get the resnap. It's just when you go past the extended, I think is what happens. Because you're, you're, you know, it's like, I got to get through this 700 page book. Let me slow time down until I read it. Right. Well, you right. go through it, then you go do this, you go do that. The next thing you know, you're like, wait, you know, you've got things you have to catch up on and you have to be in sync at a certain point. So time will get you there. Yeah. Now I know like if I have a project to do, like if I'm writing an article for a magazine, I am like so good at procrastinating and then <laughs> I get in that state of absolute panic. It took me years to learn I can get into this state without pushing it to the last minute where like my editor's calling me, you know, <laughs> not nice calls. <laughs> it took me years to learn I don't need to be in that moment of panic to do the technique. <laughs> but I know right. that when I get into the panic, the technique automatically happens. But later I learned to use the technique where um, I guess you think about it as stretching time. For me, it feels like I enter a bubble of time and like where time, be and, and time just becomes really, really slow. But I feel like I'm in a little bubble of time 
And in that space, I can open up and allow like divine guidance. And it's almost like I channel whatever I have to write. Like, it's not just me doing the work, those who can do the work better than me, because I'm just like, so open in that space. And then I will write like, an entire newspaper article in like, like, you know, like three pages plus, you know, sources and, and in like 30 minutes. And it's like really good. And I'll send it to my editor saying what needs to be done. And she'll be like, uh, you just misspelled a couple of words. Otherwise it's perfect. I'm like, dang, that's, that is not me. <laughs> But, it, you know, that's the way I always worked. And it was when I took your class on time bending that I realized this isn't just the state of genius I get when I'm panicked. That actually, you know, and as I learned more about channeling and I'm like, oh, okay. I'm just like so open in this space that the channeling can flow. But it always felt like I was just in this like, like when people say they jump out of an airplane and before you open the parachute, it feels like you're just floating. Mm -hmm. That's the way it always feels. Yeah, I think it's a little different for everybody because when I'm stretching time, it just every, I don't feel any different. I just know that I'll do X, Y, and Z. Let's say it normally takes me 15 minutes and three minutes have passed, mm -hmm. right? So that's the only way I can tell. Other than, God, does this day like seems like it's been going for four years, you know? <laughs> you know? And everyone's experienced it this year. I mean, you know, this has definitely felt like four years crammed into one. Oh, my God. Um, so, you know, it just, every, I think everybody's experience is going to be a little different. Yes. Yes, indeed. Oh, Ruth. Hi, Ruth. Ruth has a great Ruth. question. Do we ever do this unconsciously? I think you can, yes. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't experienced it personally. Um, but then again, you know, I'm not looking for it. So we did in our last class, there was someone who said, um, oh, someone we both know really well, but I can't give names, uh, saying she was at an event in DC, realized she left something really important at home. She had something like 20 minutes given to her to retrieve this from her home, which was like a half hour drive away. She managed to go home, get it, and come back, you know, like go to her car, drive home, get it, drive back, park the car, and get back, and it was within the 20 minutes. So I, I think we can do this unconsciously, um, but it's possible. Like I said, I've never done it to the best of my knowledge. <laughs> I've always, oh, I need to do this. Okay, let's make it go. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that's how I did it when I wrote articles. I just got in such a state of panic that I got out of my way and let it happen. To the news. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I think we can, we just don't realize we did it. <laughs> right? <laughs> you wake up and like, wait, it's New Year's? What the hell? <laughs> We're Christmas though. <laughs> no, that's just partying too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blaming it on time. <laughs> yeah. So just think about every single time when you realize, I can't believe I got all that done so fast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's quite a yeah. few of those. And yeah. 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 And the other thing is, um, it's not always about stretching the time. Like you taught us how to get from point A to point B quickly. And while the time seems to accommodate it, it's also like the cars get out of your way, like all obstacles get out of your way. Yeah, which is the universe uh, uh, works with you in order to get your end result because it's uh, it's not a it's a demand. It's like go to go to here, got to be here by this time. Let's make it happen, and then it just. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. And then when you hit all the green lights and everyone gets out of your way, it's just, it's a beautiful thing. No traffic. Yeah. No. <laughs> I have experienced that after you taught us. I, and I had to drive on the Beltway a lot during rush hour. Every day I put that to use. Uh, that, I love that. It's like, watch this, they'll just get out of the way. <laughs> yeah, I, I enjoyed that. 
now that there's like no traffic, it's like, yes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I want to ask you, with all of your time bending, one thing maybe not everyone knows about you, so sorry if I'm giving something away, but you don't always stay in this timeline. You travel to alternative timelines a lot. Yeah, I've been jumping around a, a lot more recently. Um, I didn't know I was doing that. Um, I think it was just, I've been, always been doing it. I just didn't consciously know it. Um, one of the ones that happened, it was probably 2014, 15 in that time frame. Um, I was flying from the West Coast to the East Coast. And I was up, uh, I was... I was sitting in an airplane seat. I don't even remember where I was. <laughs> and I looked next to me and uh, there were two African-American ladies on the plane with me, you know, listening directly across because they were just talking and stuff. And it was like, okay, I'm going, I'm taking a nap. You know, I put my little pillow, lay down. After we, after we took off, I always wait till we take off. Then I go to sleep. And uh, I woke up a couple hours later, you know, wanted some water and I looked over and I noticed, um, there was one African-American and one Asian-American. I thought, oh, one of her friends stopped by and, you know, talked to her, right? Not a big deal, right? Well, as time went on, it's like she didn't move. That was her seat. She got served lunch there. And I'm like, wait a minute. You know, it was like I had immediately just jumped a timeline. But that was the only thing that showed me that I had jumped a timeline. Mm -hmm. um, a more recent event of timeline uh, jumping, which everybody, uh, I shouldn't say everybody, a good portion of the world has noticed was um, mm -hmm. when our current president went to the church and held up the Bible, um, I don't really, yeah, I remember a, a gold cross being on the front uh, of the, the book. And then all of a sudden, a few weeks later, it was gone. And now it's black. And it's like every, half of us remember there was and half of us remember there's not. Um, these little things are indicators that you've jumped a timeline. Hopefully it's into a better timeline. Um, you know, that's always the intent is mm -hmm. to jump into a better timeline than where you're currently at. Cause it helps with your evolution, your learning and towards ascension. Um, so yeah. it's always, it's, it's always nice, but it can be a little, um, it can really rock your nerves because you remember stuff that kind of like the, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, Nelson Mandela, the effect, uh, where you remember something that others don't. Like I remember him dying in jail in, I think in 93. And I read something recently, he got out and then he lived another 20 years. And I was like, no, he didn't, he died. He was death. president. But my recollection is he died in jail. That's so, crazy. This exactly. is a better timeline then. <laughs> yes. Like he ended apartheid. <laughs> yes. No, no, I know. But it just, it, I remember that ending, but I don't remember him being a part of it. I remember somebody else. I, I don't remember his name. Right. Um, you know, and there's other people who also remember him, you know, dying in jail. So, mm -hmm. you know, these little things are stuff that tell you that, you know, you've jumped a timeline. And it could right. be really small. It could be really big, you know, like Bernstein, Bernstein. Mm -hmm. the bears you know those kind of things um you know yeah. sometimes things in the house move the paint on a wall it has changed like the one in your your wellness center <laughs> that was so funny you walk into my wellness center one day and you're like when did you paint this i'm like uh when we opened and you're like no you changed the color I'm like, no yep. <laughs> yeah so i gotta say um about the the bible when you called me and you said describe the bible in the picture and i described it and then i looked online like where'd the cross go where, where? Yeah. and again he's holding it open you know he's holding it with the face so yeah. if if there wasn't a decoration it's just a black book with all the decoration and writing on the back that he so um it makes no sense for him to hold a a plain book right. i mean not that he makes a lot of sense but um i have mentioned that without your name so now some of the people watching i've talked about <laughs> i have mentioned saying 
who remembers what the Bible looked like, it is amazing how many people remembered it with the cross. Yeah. Yeah. So and, there's, there's a lot more people jumping timelines, but it's also very confusing because uh -huh. it's like, what happened? Wait a minute. You know, we had this or that, or, you know, they're just small details that change. Um, so yeah, if, if, uh, if you, if you think you're jumping timelines, um, put an email definitely you can send an email and we'll, we'll talk about it because it, it could be it could be infuriating some days <laughs> you know it's like we bought a blue car why is it red no we bought a red car no it was blue <laughs> you know i mean things yeah. like that well ever since that day you came into my wellness center and you were adamant that i think it was green you thought it was green and i all i remember is the color you thought it was was a color i had almost chosen like I recall going where I had the sample paints of like the 10 different samples I had purchased mm -hmm. and the color you thought it was, was one of the sample paints. Um, but um, since then, I've been very interested in jumping timelines and now I do it all the time. <laughs> so um, about a year ago or a little over a year ago, um, I was working on a book I'm writing, and for anyone who's asking about my books, none of them are finished yet. <laughs> I have a whole bunch in process, none are finished. Um, sorry. <laughs> so I'm working on this book, and I was feeling very stuck. So I thought, I am sure, because I can be kind of distracted and lackadaisical and lazy in this life, so I am sure that I have been more focused in other lives, how about if I jump timelines, because I know these books are soul contracted and my guides are always yelling at me that I'm behind schedules. So I figure in other lives, I've finished the book. So I jumped to several other timelines where I was either working on the book or had finished it. And I read the books that I wrote in those timelines so that I could come back to this timeline and write what I'm supposed to write. Um, and in one timeline, though, it was like all so successful, I didn't want to leave. I was like, it's better here. I want to stay. <laughs> it was really hard to come back. So I came back and I went to um, our Tuesday group. I, I'm in a Tuesday meditation group. Um, and um, some people you're watching are also in. So I went to the Tuesday group, but I was still kind of in this other timeline because I didn't want to lose the book information. And in this other timeline that was kind of invading, I was like in both at once. In the other timeline, it was not the same people in this group. So I walked into the building and this one woman walked up to me and she's like, oh, hi. So I walked, held up my hand. I'm like, oh, hi, I'm Bonita. It's nice to meet you. And she looked at me and she's like, <laughs> for like the millionth time, I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. And I'm thinking like, I do not know this woman. <laughs> and then um, it was, she was like, okay, so uh, you and I are friends with, and she mentioned someone uh, who's this amazing shaman. She's like, do you remember when we've gone out to lunch with him? I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, of course I remember you, and him and all that. At that moment, like as she was talking about like what good friends we were with this other person, he texted the two of us saying, I felt like I should say hello. And <laughs> nice. So then like, she's, she's like, you need to sit next to me. You are in no condition to be allowed on your own. And so I sat next to her and she said, you know, this is the first time you've ever sat next to me in this group. And I'm like, uh, yeah, of course I know that. And she said, you're not even in this timeline right now. Where are you? What timeline are you? And you've been jumping timelines again, haven't you? And I was like, uh, uh, uh yeah. Like, I don't know. Or she was like teasing me the whole evening because she's like, look, you see so-and-so, do you know her? And I'm like, um, no. And she's like, you guys did blank and blank and blank together. I'm like, she said, did you ever do this? And I was like, yeah, but with this other person in New York. <laughs> so yeah, jumping timelines can make you kind of goofy. 
<laughs> <laughs> or appear goofy to other people like what is your problem you know yeah especially with people who don't understand them like what's wrong with you why are you you know that kind of thing um yeah it uh <laughs> <laughs> so here's an interesting one for you for so instead of going to their timeline to read the book and try to retain the knowledge why don't you just bring that book from the other timeline and manifest it in current time i could but i wanted to see like how i worked in the other timelines and you know i was curious i want a little looky loo and again <laughs> like if if i have some personal karmic lessons in process that I have completed that lesson elsewhere, so I'm much more uh, evolved. I want to see like how I do it and like how good is everything afterwards. Like because there's always like when you cling to a karmic lesson, it always gets a little more difficult the more you cling to it. And when you complete a karmic lesson, there's always like in one way or another a benefit you know, be it emotional growth or release or your life is better or energy flows better or or like, you know, you've released anger or you've released feeling like a victim or you don't get sniffles anymore or whatever. So I wanted to see like how the better me's <laughs> So uh, we have a couple of questions. Uh, one from Lori. Can you jump timelines and not remember who you are? I had a strange experience where I was suddenly uh, unable to remember who I was and what things were called. I remember looking at a fan trying to remember the name for it. I laid down and closed my eyes and it felt like five minutes as I laid there trying to remember and suddenly my alarm went off, it had been five hours. I laid in place for five hours. What? <laughs> oh, so it sounds like you were visiting another timeline, but it just didn't sink. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's kind of a weird, it's kind of like what they call um, a waking dream where you actually see it, where you feel and smell and you touch everything. I mean, it's like you're in this dreaming, but everything is very real, but you also don't have, um, you're kind of, it's like you don't have knowledge of your current life and you don't have knowledge of your former life. You're just like, where am I? Who is this? What is going on? Mm -hmm. So, but the question being is, have you had that before? Or have you had it since? Because there might be something in that life that's trying to be brought across here. And it's also, that's also kind of how it starts. <laughs> Sorry to tell you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So here's another thing. Um, Yolanda. Okay, Yolanda, you're freaking me out. Either you wrote a question earlier and deleted it, or my timelines are messing up because... <laughs> I had seen a question from you or a comment from you earlier and then uh, when, but we're in the middle of a thing. And then when I went to read it, Lori's question was there, your question was not. So please type in the comments if you had written and deleted a question so that my mind is not messing with what time. Yeah, LOL, in fact, but I saw a question from you earlier. So either you deleted it before you wrote this one you just did and now you have one why do i feel like time is speeding up and my days are flying by life passing by so swiftly oh you did delete one thank you thank you i my job there you go <laughs> don't delete things because they feel unimportant because they you know we always second guess what's relevant yes. to us thinking oh no one else will care and then how often do you then get up your courage to ask the question that you think you're the only one who cares and everyone's like oh thank you so much that was the best question but yes exactly so yo-yo is asking why do i feel like time is speeding up and my days are flying by life passing so swiftly i can relate to that a lot of people can um right now uh for me time is going exceptionally slow. The universe has decided that I need to live every moment. Um, so it's, does, it doesn't matter what I do. It's, and I'm okay. 
you know, it just, I have more time to enjoy my coffee in the morning and watch the birds. Yeah, I'm okay with it. <laughs> um, but sometimes um, this has been a very harsh year for a lot of people. And one of the things as humans we do is we just, we want to get through it as fast as possible because we don't like what's going on right now. I mean, it's, it's, it's straight out devastation. And we don't want to live that way. We want to go to something more normal where we can see our friends and hug our friends and go to public gatherings. So we want to like get through it as fast as possible. So you're kind of creating time to go faster, but it's almost like you're spinning your wheels because there's a timeline that is being adhered to right now. And things have to play out in a certain way. And it, this is globally, it's not just um, for one or two people, it, it, globally we're having the issue. Um, so take a deep breath, relax, ask for it to reset. Um, for me, when I do a reset, I, uh, I tap the center of my palms three times. And each time I hit it, I say reset, reset, reset. And if that doesn't work, I do that three times also to, for a total of nine, but that's for me. So if, if it works for you, great. Um, maybe just say to the universe, I want to reset um, and see if that helps. But we were just, we want to get out of where we're at. And then what's the best way? If you're running from a bear, do you want to run normally or do you want to run really, really fast? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to get away from the bear. So we go really fast. <laughs> Try that. See if that helps. Yeah. That makes sense. I mean, I had been feeling like time was going too fast. Like I wake up in the morning and the next thing I know, it's like time for bed. But like Kim and I were just saying, you know, recently for me, time has been super slow and all of my commitments have just like fallen on the wayside. Like all of the sudden, every commitment I have for clients or whatever has just like stopped. So I said, okay. And uh, obviously I am meant to focus on something right now and everything that whatever considers a distraction has been removed. So now I have to think about where's my attention being drawn to that is the most. Oh, Yo-Yo said that answer makes perfect sense. Thank you for that response. I have been able to slow down time and it fascinated me as I was doing it. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. don't, and look, don't while, forget you guys were, while you oh, guys were yeah. talking about it you created such good energy I just like excellent you know, turned my fork into uh very spiky artwork <laughs> we're gonna call that the time bending fork <laughs> yeah now I do this because uh time bending and manifestation they're not that different time bending is really mm -hmm. manifesting time yes you're not creating time or destroying time. You're just manifesting it to be how you wish it to be at the moment, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Give you more time to do something or get somewhere faster to get away from the bear quicker, but whatever the case is. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh my yeah. God, tapping the palm. <laughs> <laughs> Running from the bear. <laughs> Reset. <laughs> Yeah. But, um, I mean, we've been talking with the librarians a lot lately where they're basically like stop clinging to linear time. They've been saying that yeah. to us since last summer. Yeah. Yeah. So um, lots of different thoughts on time. Um, one of the ones I do believe is, is time is a made up structure that humans did. So that way they have an idea of, of a of how much you have done of something you you work four hours not i you know i didn't plow four fields right um part of it too is you know it gives um an idea of structure time you know you need to be here at this time not when the sun comes up i need you over here at 6 a.m i need you here you know so there's some type of idea um but again that's that's a human thing so, but time is, time is like anything else. Time is energy. You, you can move it to do whatever you want. You can manifest a new book. You can manifest a new house. You can manifest a whole day. 
you know, and make it 10 minutes and the day's over, or you could take that 10 minutes and make it an entire day. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things though is, is no self doubt when you're doing the manner of like, I don't know if I can do this. It's not going to work. We're all, we're all capable, we're all energy. We're all capable of creating everything that we need and that we want. It's just, we get into self doubt a little bit. So when you're working with time or with anything, just, I can do it and, and go forward. Just don't put any good example. When way back when, when I did start um, with the time bending, part of it was making, uh, it's called the what if game. You know, what if this happens or what if that happens, right? So what I would do is like, okay, I wanna go forward in time. I wanna do this, um, but you know, it can't lead me to a bad place or, you know, you can't dictate the terms. You either go forward or you go backwards. It's one or the other. You just, and time will take you, time will take you where it wants to take you. you mm -hmm. All you can do is ask for permission to get on whichever boat you want to get on. And time will stay as long as it, uh, if you don't reset it, time will stay. And then that creates another issue. Um, and sometimes I've had this happen also where I've wanted uh, time to go quicker and time in the universe laughed at me and time stood still and it went, it went with the clock mm -hmm. and it was no matter what I did. So, but yeah, just believe in yourself, no doubt, because you can do it because they, you're a spark, you're energy, you can do, you can do anything you want. Yeah. It's, we're the only one that's holding ourselves back except my pen is still straight, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, on Sunday at 4 p.m. here on my Facebook page, Mariam Sardari and I are going to talk about manifestation while we do spoon bending. Excellent. So anyone who wants to join, including Kim, uh, you know, grab your old silverware or plasticware, you know, disposable plasticware works great too. And sit with us while we've been silverware and talk about manifestation. But um, for time, you know, you make me think about when I go to Mexico, sadly not this winter, but um, there is a pyramid there, which is, I believe the oldest found archeological temple in Mexico. Uh, Cañada de la Virgen, and um, it is a pyramid that is stepped to a pinnacle. Okay. The pyramid is for the divine feminine. It is a calendar. It's a lunar calendar. So every full moon of each month, there are six steps, and they're big steps. <laughs> like, I've climbed this. It is big, big, many steps within each step, <laughs> within each layer, but it goes six steps up and the full moon hits the corner of it each month. So the distance between one and the next one is from corner to corner, 30 days, you know, or one lunar full moon to full moon. And, um, and not to get boring into details, but um, this pyramid also mimics the geography of the vista of the mountain behind it. So if you look at this, it is the same shape and size as the mountain behind it. And then there's a temple for the divine masculine way further up another mountain range that during summer solstice and winter solstice, the moon is then at the peak and it connects perfectly with the, uh, the temple of the male, the divine masculine on another mountain range. It's a smaller temple because early in there was a celebration of the divine feminine magic. Um, so their concept of time was also connected with geography, magics, yin-yang, harvest, 
the stars, uh, you know, religion, theology, like time was not just an isolated thing. It was part of all of this woven together. Um, so you made me, <laughs> I don't know, maybe I just went on an unnecessary tangent. <laughs> but when you say we've constructed time, we created it. Look at how far we've gone in a few thousand years from this amazing way of seeing time as a part of a great construct of total being and connection to, oh, what's on my Google calendar? I'd better, <laughs> you know, hurry up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the other one is the older way, it's kind of neat because you can look it up and you used to be able to look at the clouds, the moon, and, the, and when the birds are flying, okay, winter's coming, we probably have about two weeks, but we really need to start doing this, right? Now it's like, well, Google says it might snow tomorrow, which they're always wrong, right? <laughs> you know, it's, like, it's just kind of like, you know, we've, uh, part of that too is being in touch with earth, you know, and being in touch with your surroundings and other people. So, you know, it, it's, the mechanical construct has taken us away from being, not being in touch with, the earth energies that actually help with that. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. you got the sundial. I like the sundial. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll um, look that up. I didn't know about that. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll send you some info. Um, it's uh, Albert Coffey, it's the archeologist who like oversees most of the research going on there. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting. I've been out there a number of times. Every time I go to Mexico, I go there as often as I can because whenever I go there, it's like the magic is so powerful that ancient spirits are there. And um, I went there once with some archaeologists where... I was walking around and listening to them talk, but I was telling them what I was seeing. And it actually was relevant information for them. But most of the people I saw didn't look like people. They looked like uh, pictographs. You know, like a body would be an upside down triangle with, you know, like, like cave drawings kind of people. But the information they shared was like, it was the weirdest thing. And so it was really like ancient time coming up and speaking directly with modern time because these ancient spirits didn't, they existed outside of time. Um, that brings up a really good point um, for anybody watching. Um, this happened to me so many times. Matter of fact, I told you the story when I was younger, when I was living in Hawaii, me and several of my friends, we went, so uh, we lived on Oahu. My dad was in the Navy and we went to one of the officer's house for, I don't know, something on a weekend. And they basically, hey, you're out, it's sunny out, go outside and play, right? So we were out running around and there was an old abandoned military hospital, naval hospital um, on the grounds there. Um, it, it was still in good repair to a point, right? But it was just abandoned. They don't use it anymore. Uh, but it had been used during World War II. And so we were kids and we're like, hey, let's go in here and take a look. So we were running around and there was four of us, we were all running. We went down into the basement and we walked through these doors and there was a full on completely clean room and the, the doctor was doing surgery. The guy turned and looked at us and says, get those kids out of here. So we took off running. Okay, we're thinking, you know, first off, we're in a military base, so we're thinking some really bad juju is going on, right? They're, you know, experimenting and shit, right? So it's like, run, 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 run. So we went back and we told our parents, hey, blah, blah, blah. So they called the MPs because, you know, this is not supposed to be happening. And we went down there and it looked like just like the rest of the hospital. Abandoned, dirty, <laughs> nothing was in there. Um, but not only I, but the other three that were with me saw it. Um, if you guys have any experience of something like that, you're crossing into other timelines, not necessarily yours, but it could be any. Like I, I will walk into an old house and I could tell you what used to be there, the colors and stuff like that. 
Um, chances of you being being able to bend time, jump timeline, stuff like that are really good because you're seeing other timelines already. You just don't know what you're seeing or you don't realize you know, what you can do with it. Because I mean, I've been doing that since I was a kid. 40 years later, it's like, shit, let's stop time. You know? <laughs> I want another pint, you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, if you, if you guys are starting to do that or have done that, then you know, you're, you're definitely there. You just need a little push and let's get you, uh, because it definitely, it's it's brought some really good things into my life, jumping timelines. It brought some challenges, but eventually enhanced my life. Mm -hmm. So, but it, uh, yeah. But once you catch the, ah, oh, damn, I'm in another time zone, another timeline, another time zone, timeline, what, <laughs> we can call it whatever. Yeah. Well, there was that time when you taught the class, I think it was like a couple of days later, like all kinds of time weaving tapestry <laughs> things were happening but yeah. a few days later I was driving my son to school so I had two drop two blocks to drive to a t-junction and then turn and then went the way to the school which was not that far but it was like a lot of busy roads so I didn't want him walking you know before young person was fully awake um so I pulled out and I saw two blocks ahead the lights of the cop car and I was like oh I knew there was a speed trap like a block further away so it's like oh my god the cops pulled a speed trap to some poor person who's trying to get to work and you know and I like and whenever they do that you always end up with the clogged up traffic and a bunch of angry people I'm like oh this is not what I want to deal with. So, but I saw them. I saw them. I saw the lights there. And I pointed my son. He's like, yeah, like he saw them. And then we got to that T-junction. There's no cop car. There's no lights. I looked at my son. I'm like, that's weird. And he's like, oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and then I dropped him off at school. I came back. It's like in the most five minutes later, not that much, just a few minutes later. And as I pulled onto that road, just like a half block where I turn right and then turn, you know, I'm at the T junction to turn. There's the cop car pulled the guy over. And the car that they pulled over was the car we saw. So we were seeing a few minutes into the future. We, we saw this event before it happened. A few minutes before it happened. So I'm like, thank you, Kim. <laughs> and most people see that when they, you know, they dream. They don't generally see it in waking. I call it a waking dream. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, most people don't get to see that. And that I usually see the past in waking dreams. Like I, I can go to Gettysburg and be like, oh yeah, this used to be here, here, and that's me. You know, I just I'll start talking and then I'll see a picture. It's like, oh, that's exactly what I was talking about. Um, you know, so but I I'm not good at uh I shouldn't say that. I have not seen the future like that. Yeah. Okay, so we have two comments. Okay. Uh, one uh, from the first one from Yolanda, the second one from Lori. I used to see people who looked like people I knew in other places. When I saw them, they would wink at me and nod in recognition. But if I ever verbally acknowledged them by saying I know someone who they look like, they would disappear and I would never see them again. If I worked with them, we were assigned different shifts, never to encounter again. That is cool. Nice. So you had a lot of lovely little spirit guides working with you, coming as familiar so that way you don't freak out. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Ooh, yeah. Time to ask him for uh, lottery numbers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, actually, uh, you can, like, um, uh, not approaching in person, but if you see them and they're giving you that little wink, you can send some love to them and send a little wish with the love, like, let's make my day special. Thank you. But, yeah. Um, and then Lori says, I work with investigators on unsolved murder and missing person cases. Wow. Right now, I'm just telepathically connecting to the deceased missing person to gather as much info as I can. 
but if I could use this time transition, like your experience with the surgeon, this could help me find the last needed clues to solve the cases. I got to take your class. Well, yes, you do. Beautiful. And you know what, I will put the link to the class here in the comments for anyone who's interested. And I will mention um, if you uh, join, uh, sign up for my website, BonitaWoods.org, and join the level one, uh, uh, which is our free programs. Uh, then you will get an alert and have like eternal access to all the free videos, including Kim's um, next month when Kim and the librarians are chatting. And uh, oh, that's right. We're doing another one next month. Also, the joy of time bending other live streams. So you're doing two live streams with me next month. Yes. So um so become, join the uh, Spiritual Alchemy and you have automatic access and there's no charge to you. Um, so Okay, so there's a link to Kim's class and I'll put a link to become the Spiritual Alchemist, which again is free events, no cost, no credit card needed just a lot of fun and you'll see a lot more of Kim there. <laughs> yes. um, and we are coming towards the end of our time. We are at the end of our time. Kim, do you have anything you'd like to share? You guys can do anything you want. Just, you know, you, you're the masters of your own. If, if you want to go back in time, make it happen. And then, you know, Bring back the let's see the lottery numbers and <laughs> yeah, because we are our big, we are our biggest obstacles. Uh -huh. Absolutely, That's the one thing I'm I've learned in the last year. Yes, yes, we are. <laughs> Well, thank you all for joining us and okay, it's so nice to see you and uh, everyone else who commented. Thank you, Yo-Yo and Lori and everyone. And um, oh, <laughs> I'm feeling time spacey now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, uh... The librarians have left. They were all behind me. They were just, it was, it was buzzing. <laughs> and, uh, they've left. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, tonight, by the way, I will be channeling the Akashic Librarians 7 to 8.30. Uh, I'll put the link that here in the comments. And they're like, oh, yes, we're going to be talking about time. <laughs> so that'll be fun. Uh, my own personal conversation is what I'm hearing. No. <laughs> uh, you know, they're going to be like all around you, Kim. You're going to have weird oh. stuff happening. Oh, yeah. I already have. <laughs> all right. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you for Bye. joining Thank us. you, guys. Bye.